Boom! Hey guys, Panic here, otherwise known as Panic Picnic, and today we are going to do a full-fledged mastery guide on one of my favorite races and one of my favorite characters in the StarCraft universe, and that is Jim Raynor. Now, this is more specifically for newer people who are just completely newer to co-op or just who may have actually bought the uh, uh, any of the StarCraft during the Black Friday sale. Now, we've got a whole lot to get into, but let's go ahead and start in with the co-op missions. Now, as I said before, Jim Rayner is one of my favorite characters. You, you pretty much, you work through his upgrades, but once you get to level 15, this is when this video is going to come into play. So let's go ahead and talk about the masteries. Boom! As usual, he's got three power sets. Power set one, he has 10 pack duration. And speed, speed increases for drop pod units. For power set two, we have Hyperion cooldown and Banshee airstrike cooldown. For power set three, we have Medic's heal and addition, additional target. And damage reduction during Medic, medic heals. So let's go ahead and talk about let's go ahead and talk about power set one first. Let's go ahead and start with basics. Power set one, as I said before, it has two. It has ten pack duration and speed increases for drop pod units. Personal. Let's go ahead and talk about each one. Well, first one, ten pack duration increases duration of the ten pack, and its duration is going to be increased by two percent for each level, up to about a maximum of sixty up to a maximum of about sixty percent. Now, what's the other one? Speed increase for drop pod units, combat units. Yeah. Temporary gain, increased attack speed, movement speed, energy regeneration, and cooldown reduction when they are first trained. And that's going to go up by, boom, 2% each time up to a maximum of, as you, as before, 60%. Now, personally, I like to put all of my points into speed increased for increases for drop pod units. And the reason why I do this is, and I don't put any in stim pack duration, is because stim pack duration is only affects units made from the barracks. And there are a lot of other units that Reiner actually has access to, outside, including the factory units and those of the starport. He actually has the battle cruisers, which is pretty dang amazing, as well as the siege tanks. And the speed increases for drop pod units affects those as well. Also, um, the speed increases for drop pod units is also really good, like let's say when you're overall getting swarmed. It's like a free stim pack, and then when you stim on top of that, it's an extra stim pack. So you're effectively getting two stim packs for literally the price of one when you just spawn, like... Let's say you just let's say your um, your bio ball that you have is completely wiped, but you've got your Rainer, so of course you have mules and stuff. So you have eight million resources. You have eight. Let's say you have a hundred thousand minerals, which is obviously an exorbitant amount. You have four, six thousand. Let's make it something real believable because you're you're floating. So what do you do? Is you just get all your barracks and you get whatever you have and you just spam it spam it in a general area and you drop every marine and medic and marauder that you have. Then what you do is you stim that on top of it, so like I said, you get a free extra stim, so you're getting a whole lot of extra damage. Also, it's good for reinforcements as well. But like I said before, it's really good because it affects siege tanks and his other units as battle cruisers as well as his Vikings. Which again, is already pretty dang amazing because it allows your siege tanks to completely decimate something when you just spawn them out, you just start blowing things up. It's great. Now, for Power Set 2, this one's, good. this one's probably going to be a bit more of an up-in-the-air portion for me, but let's go and talk about each one in general. So, the first one we got for Power Set 2 is we have the Hyperion cooldown. It reduces the cooldown of the Hyperion ability, does not affect initial cooldown at the start of the mission. And the second one he has in Power Set 2 is reduces the cooldown of Banshee Airstrike ability, does not affect the initial cooldown at the start of the mission. So basically, we're overall getting two big reductions in abilities. But what exactly are we getting with the Hyperion cooldown? We're obviously getting one of the most powerful units in all of co-op. It's the Hyperion. It does a shitload of damage, and it can be upgraded with the upgrade um, with the, um, those that are in the um, armory. Um, but also, the Hyperion does something else that's actually really cool. If you look at the upgrades, it's one of these actually. It's one of the later ones, I believe. Yeah, increases the damage dealt by friendly units near their Hyperion by two. I called on the Hyperion from the top panel. And then, of course, you're getting increases attack speed from Rainer's combat units by 15 percent. And this, of course, affects both sides. So, effectively, you're getting a whole lot of extra damage for your Marines, your Marauders, your Firebats, your entire factory troops, as well as your entire air troops. Now, I like to put... Okay, now, but what else are we getting with the Banshee Airstrike cooldown? So basically, the Hyperion, like I said before, you're getting a huge increase in attack um, for your entire units. But it, oh, not, not, not to mention, it doesn't just affect your entire units. It also affects your allies' units, which is actually pretty damn cool. 
Yep, dealt by all my friendly units. So basically, you're getting your you're basically giving your allies a bonus. So basically, if your allies pick Zagra and they've got nothing but Zerglings, just running around, guess what? They're getting a boost. I mean, boosted Zergling. I mean, plus two attack extra on Zerglings is actually pretty dang good. Let's be real. But what else? What are we getting with the Banshee Airstrike cooldown? Well, the Banshee Airstrike cooldown has a lot less of a cool. Uh, it's, uh, it's up quicker. The um, cooldown wise, you're gonna get getting it a lot more often. By comparison. Every point you get, you're gonna get about four seconds. Oh dang! I mean, look at that. Look at that. Four seconds each time by comparison to the Hyperion's three seconds each time. So overall, you're not getting too much of a duration du difference other than about a 30 second dura um, difference when you're fully maxed out. So, what are you getting with the Banshee Airstrike cooldown? The Banshee Airstrike cooldown, like I said, you're getting it more often, but it only works against ground units. Again, this is pretty much is just what the Banshee does. But what it does is they can shoot in straight lines, which is really, really good. But it's pretty good early game, but late game they, they kind of lose their focus. I like to put all my points in the Hyperion cooldown, and like I said, this is going to be it. Because I like for the fact that it attacks air, that it attacks ground, but also it's really, really effective and gives my units and my allies a huge, giant boost, which I just really enjoy. Now let's go ahead and talk about Power Set 3. Power Set 3 has got two, like everything else. It's Medic's Heal Additional Target, or damage reduction during medic heals. So let's go ahead and talk about each one real quick. Well, for medic heal additional targets, medics heal an additional nearby target for a portion of the main heal amount. And for the other one, damage reduction during medic heals, new being healed by medics takes, takes less damage. Hope you do. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about which one. Okay, let's talk about the medics heal additional target. You're getting about, you can get 3% each time, up to about a 90. Damage reduction during medic heals, you're only getting a 0.5 increase each time. And I'm like, Ugh, you can already tell, if you can't tell just by the tonality of my voice, which one I'm already leaning towards. I like to put all of my points into Medic's Heal an additional target. Medic's Heal nearby target for a portion of the main health amount. And you're like, well, panic. Why do you do that? Well, the reason I do it is because overall, the um, your bio army is really, really expendable. Like, they have no ground. They, they're not really sticky at all. Medic's don't... Um, like, I would do for, if medics could heal other units, such as um, those in the main, like, in factory units or mechanical units, then it'd just overall be great. Medics healing additional targets is actually really good for, like, when your allies running with Zerg units or basically uh, Nova units as well. Because it allows you to heal them up at quick, it allows you to hear them, heal them quicker. But also, most of the units that are bio units in this game, with the exception of Abathur's units, they're really not sticky at all. They're almost expendable. So, I mean, you might as well throw away those... You might as well throw them away and get new units, to be honest. I know it sounds kind of greedy, but... I mean, you could turn that extra supply into, um, into factory units or even starport units. Or you could even just spam them out, and with the increase to drop pod units, as well as the extra stim pack you're going to get from just overall increase of units, it's just going to work out in general. It's just going to be better. Also, the reason I like the Medic's Heal at additional target for a portion of the main heal amount, because when you're about at... When you're about like 72%, which is where I'm at about right now, I mean, one medic, you can already heal your entire units quicker. Like your giant bio ball, let's say you actually undercut the amount of medics you have, or let's say you have an overall perfect amount of medics. You can keep your army alive for longer because you can heal more of them from burst damage, whether you have a giant psionic storm or something like that from from one of the enemy um, one of the enemies that they have. Um, so you can survive for a bit longer. That's the only... That's, that's what I'm. That's what I like about it. The damage reduction during medic kills is, like I said, you're not really getting a lot out of it. It's because the units that you have are so so squishy. Uh, honestly, a 0.5 reduction in damage. I mean, heck, even if you put all the points in it, like even if I put all my points in it, I'm probably I'm gonna get a maximum of about a plus 15% damage reduction. I mean, that may constitute for maybe about a, maybe a plus one extra in armor, but it's not really worth it in my opinion. I like to go ahead and full, full heal my arm, my army. That's the big one. But like I said, this, that's, that's, again, like I said, this is just my opinion, but this is what I like to do. I like to max, I don't like to put any points in anything else. Power set two is really up to you to decide, but for power set one, I like to put all of my points in speed increased for drops, for drop pod units, because like I said, it affects all of your units. For power set 2, this one, like I said, is really up to you, but I prefer the Hyperion cooldown, mainly because, like I said, it gives a giant bonus to yourself as well as your allies. Also, it can be teleported. You got, I mean, it's overall just a better, it's better. 
um, for power set 3, and I like to put all my points into Medic's Heal and Additional Target. Outside of that, I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope you guys like playing Rainer. He's a great character. Terran pride. Make Terran great again, as Nathaniel says. And you know what? I'll see you guys in the next, in the next, in the next hero build. That's pretty much what I'll call it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace! Bye!